Welcome back to TEC Tube. This topic is going to be on psychometric chart, which is the most exciting thing in all of HVAC. No, I'm just kidding. It's not that exciting. But it is important to know how this stuff works, and you can solve a lot of problem jobs by understanding what to do with these charts. So many of you may have a chart like this. If you don't have one and you want one, let us know. We'll hook you up or come to our TDP classes, and we use these quite a bit in there. Uh, this chart has all the properties of air defined on it. Right, so this is like a 100 year old chart, not this exact one obviously, this one's laminated, right? But the concept is 100 years old. Willis Carrier, if you didn't know, did a lot of laboratory testing and developed this chart. And then HVAC engineers forever have been using this to plot out processes and conditions. So we're gonna take a little dive into this chart and explain how this kind of works. Let's do that now. So we're gonna pull up the psychometric chart on the computer here so it'll be a little bit easier for us to see what's going on. So this is our typical psychometric chart. It's actually almost the exact same one I just showed you a minute ago. Um, so there's a few things on here to pay attention to. And you can see on here, there's a ton of lines on here. There's just overlapping, crisscrossing, swooshing lines. They're all over the place, right? So it's a lot to go on. So we're gonna break it apart piece by piece and look at it that way. So it's a little bit easier to digest that way. So on our chart here, these are the main things that we're gonna deal with. There's even more than this, and we'll have advanced training for you guys later on, but this is the basic stuff. So we're gonna be looking for wet bulb, dew point temperature, dry bulb temperature, specific humidity, and relative humidity. Those are the five major things that we're gonna work with, and maybe we'll dip into enthalpy a little bit here in a minute. So, our chart, we build it up from scratch. So along the bottom axis here, we have our dry bulb temperatures. Dry bulb means, as the name would imply, there's no moisture involved in the discussion, right? And if you have a dry bulb thing, you know there's gonna be a wet bulb thing in a little bit here, right? So dry bulb is just straight up temperature. If I had an old school mercury thermometer, it'd be dry bulb, just like we're showing here. So that goes along the bottom axis. On the vertical axis up the side, I have the specific humidity. Now specific humidity is very different than relative humidity. It's not measured in percent, like most of you probably think of humidity. It's measured in grains. So the easiest way to kind of conceptually think about that is every little water droplet, if you will, is a grain of moisture. Now a grain's actually smaller than a water droplet, but conceptually, it's a bunch of little water droplets all in the air. So how many grains of moisture do I have? If I took a box of air and counted up all the grains, how many would there be? That's on this vertical axis here. So if I go across here, here's 100 grains, here's 80 grains of moisture, and so on. So I plot one out. In order to plot something on this chart, I need to know two of those five variables. And once I know those two, I can figure out what the other three are on the chart. That's kind of the purpose of the chart. So if I take a typical room that's 75 degrees with 60 grains of moisture, I would plot a dot right there. I can do that with any of these, any of these numbers. A few more things on this chart. Up along that side there, you notice the chart is missing, right? And it was missing over here too. The chart cuts off right there. There's nothing there. That's because that end curve line there is the saturation line. That means we're 100% saturated. The air is holding the maximum amount of moisture that it possibly can hold. So there's no reason to build a chart further than that because we're never gonna be over in that range. At least in the HVAC world, we're never gonna be over there. So that's the saturation line here, also known as 100% humidity. I can start adding additional lines onto the chart. So I got my same point. I measure my 75 degrees, my 60 degrees of moisture. If I was to read the chart by going all the way to the left right here, it would be 53 degrees dew point. I can read that right here on these numbers, but they're hard to see, 50, 55, 60, or I could take it all the way down and read the 53 there. But the point is if I take this line, I extend it to the left, I'll read the dew point. And you probably know the dew point from watching the weather channel or whatever, the dew point means that if I ever get below the dew point in terms of actual temperature, it's going to condense. It'll be fully saturated. And since this is the saturation curve up here, the dew point is measured at the saturation curve, not over here in the middle of the chart. So I extend the line to the left, I can read the dew point. If we take an example, we'll use an HVAC example instead of a weather example. So I have this space above the ceiling where it's really warm, right? It's above my drop ceiling at my commercial building in this example. It's 95 degrees up there with 100 grains of moisture. That's the condition of that space. Or it's a residential house and it's the attic. It's 95 degrees up there with 100 grains of moisture. So if I plot 95 degrees with 100 grains of moisture, I can extend that line all the way to the left 
and see that I have a 67 degree dew point. That means if I put anything in the attic that's below 67 degrees, it is going to condense and sweat. So I go up there with a cold can of beer, it's going to condense and sweat, right? If I have a duct running in the attic and it's 55 degrees, uninsulated duct, it's 55 degrees, it's going to sweat on the outside of the duct, it's going to condense, it's going to drip down into the insulation on the, on the floor of the, of the attic. All right, so I need to either get this attic to not have as much moisture, or I need to raise this temperature on the inside the duct, or I need to wrap and insulate the duct. That's how I can tell when something's going to happen like that. Relative humidity, which is the humidity you verbally talk about when you tell your friends, oh yeah, it's going to be 80% humid out tomorrow or whatever. All right, that humidity is kind of special. Uh, it doesn't mean the same thing all the time. The relative part means the humidity is relative to the temperature you're at. So 80% humidity on one day is very different than 80% humidity on another day. And the way that works is if I take my same point, in this case 75 degrees with 60 grains of moisture, the relative humidity is these curved lines. So there's the 50% curve, there's the 40% curve on there. In this case, I'm halfway between, so we're going to call it the 45% curve. Anything on that red curve is 45% humidity. But you can see I have 60 grains of moisture on here. If I was to come over here and say it's 90 degrees and I'm on the red curve, 45%, now it's actually 95 grains of moisture. Different amount of moisture. These numbers here are real moisture. These curved lines are the moisture as relative to the temperature around it. With the idea being the hotter the air is, the more moisture it can hold. The cooler it is, the less it can hold. And the most it can hold is 100%, which is the saturation curve here. So I want to figure out the relative humidity. I got my 75 and 60 grains. If I draw the line straight up and say, well, at 75 degrees, how much moisture could I hold before there was a condensation problem at 75 degrees? So I go all the way up to 100% humidity and I read it across. I could hold 132 grains of moisture, but I only have 60. So I have 60 out of a maximum of 132. That's 45% relative humidity. So that's how I'd be reading that. To do a quick example, a common example is a residential window in the wintertime, right? Sometimes they sweat and they drip and the window still gets all wet and all that stuff. So if it's really cold outside, let's just say it's zero degrees outside, that means it might be 35 degrees on the inside of a double pane glass window. So the glass surface inside the home is 35 degrees. If my house is 75 degrees inside with 23% humidity, I'm good at this point right here. If I stay at the 23% humidity, that's the most I can hold. But if I was to raise the humidity up to 30%, I'd have a condensation problem. If I lowered my humidifier down to 20%, I would not have a condensation problem. So I can set my humidifier up and down to avoid the windows from condensing. Or I can heat the windows, but that'd be kind of hard to heat 30 windows in someone's house. Sling psychometer. I'm sure all of you guys out there at home have one of these. I'm sure you carry it on your truck. You use it all the time. I'm just kidding. You probably don't have one of these, but you may know a dude at the office who's old enough to have one. Uh, I don't even have one anymore and I'm, I'm becoming the old dude around here lately. Uh, but I use a digital one for the past, I don't know, seven, eight years. I've used this digital one. Actually, it's probably 10 years now. Uh, it's kind of nice. It shows me temperature in this case on here and relative humidity. So it's 72 degrees with 20% relative humidity. And unfortunately, as I hold it, and as I breathe on it, it keeps going up. So it's kind of weird in the video here, but I can also rotate it between showing me the dew point, 33 degrees, the wet bulb, 53 degrees, back to the temperature. So I got like a little mini psychometric chart built into here, which is kind of nice. So I can see what the wet bulb and dew point are without having to measure the dry bulb and go into this and convert it over. I can see all of those variables at the same time. In the old days, we used a sling psychrometer, which is nothing more than a thermometer, we put a little wet sock on it and then we'd fling it around to move air across it, which was the sling part of the discussion. And that wet sock would evaporate into the air and the temperature would be lowered because of that. So I'd read the dry bulb on there and then I'd read the wet bulb on there with the wet sock, if you will. And I'd use that to come on here and plot it. Then I'd figure out everything from there, relative humidity, dew point, et cetera. But now modern tools, you can do it all in one. The wet bulb is right on the chart in a little bit of a different way. So that same point we talked about before, 75 degrees with 60 grains of moisture. If I read across this way, I get the dew point of 53. But if I read up this 45 degree angle line, I get to a wet bulb of 61. So wet bulb is on is right on the on the on the 
Wet bulb is right on the diagonal line. Dew point is red straight across. Temperature is red straight down. So if you look at all of them at the same time, right? So wet bulb was measured on the diagonal. Dew point straight to the left. Dry bulb straight down. Relative humidity is the curved line. Specific humidity, actual humidity, is uh, horizontally across to the right. So I can read any one of those five variables. If I know two of them, I can plot the point and get the other three from there. Because getting specific humidity is really hard to measure in the field. So I'm going to have to read probably wet bulb and dry bulb in the field and calculate the others from the chart. And then we'll have additional training modules down the road to do more stuff with these charts. And we can plot out application processes, dehumidification processes, things like that. Any direction on this chart you move, you can add heat, remove heat. Uh, add moisture, remove moisture, so com some combination of those things. We'll talk about that in future training modules. So with that, that wraps up our intro introduction to psychometrics. Thank you.